Hi everybody, it's Jackie Schomburg Minen. Um, this video is, I honestly don't know what to call it. Remember how they used to do the potpourri category on Jeopardy? I feel like this is mixed media potpourri. So maybe I'll, that's what I'll name it, I don't know yet. Um, I set out to do a set of abstract landscapes with my jelly plate. I have a small five by seven jelly plate and I thought, no problem. I'll just make another pair of these uh, and see what I can come up with. And then I started and it immediately went off the rails. So, so um, there's a lot of collage happening. There's a lot of layers. There's a lot of just really random um, flailing about. And I like where they ended up but it was a whole process. Some might call it chaos. Some might call it, um, you know, grit and perseverance. I don't know, it's somewhere in between the two. So I hope you enjoy this video. Let me know what you think. Um, does it look as chaotic as it felt at the time? I don't know. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will uh, show you now what I created. All right, so I am starting off with my 12 by 9 or 9 by 12 sketchbook. These are the Canson ones with the hard cover that I really like. And on the left, you'll see my tiny jelly plate. It feels tiny to me. It's 5 by 7. And I like using this one as a stamp. So this is alizarin crimson with some fluorescent red. These are, these are Nova color paints. And I'm looking to get a background. I intended for these to be abstract landscapes, um, you know, <laughs> I'd like to start off with an intention and then see where things go. Um, I don't know that I would argue that they finished as landscapes, but you guys can let me know what you think. Certainly not in the, uh, the traditional abstract landscape way does that even make sense traditional abstract I don't know um but they don't resemble any scenery at the end that's for sure I really like these two colors together though so I will be using these again really liked that I'm adding some celadon and I was kind of up for anything at this point I grabbed some of my kids rubber bands, set them down just to provide a resist for the paint. Getting pickier with my designs. And now when I pull it up, you'll see that it leaves the paint everywhere except where the rubber bands were. Now I left big circles because I didn't push very hard on those areas. But look at this paper that I pull off the jelly plate. I love how that turned out. Oops, sorry, it's out of the frame. It'll come up again. In the lower left, you can see part of it. So with this, I'm only pushing on the parts that are left over, which turned out pretty cool. I did spritz some water on there and then used a hairdryer to dry everything because I'm using my golden open paints for that and I didn't want everything to smear. Coming in with some translucent or transparent green gold. And I feel like in my mind at this point, I, <laughs> I don't know that like the check engine light was on, but I was kind of, the engine was starting to overheat because I really wasn't sure what to do with these. I liked how they were, but wasn't what I wanted to do to add on. So I just started going for it. So I believe this is a mix of white, Payne's gray, and I think a little bit of, I think a little bit of turquoise, or it could just be Payne's gray and white. I think there's some turquoise in there as well. I should really write these things down. And here I'm using some yarn as a resist. Let's 
very hard to hold this floppy thing and get it where you want to put it. That's the only bad part about using it as a stamp. Okay, now that I really like. There's a big part of me that wishes I had stopped there. However, that would be a really lame video. <laughs> so, uh, in the interest of science, I kept going. This, because there's so much fluorescent left, and I used the yarn, left those cool lines, which I do love. And now I'm just getting some of the, the paint off on that tissue paper so I can use that for future collage. So I liked these. I liked where I was going with these. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> so I kept going. The main point I'd like to make in this video is that if you want to have something new in your art so that you don't feel stuck and you don't feel like you're making the same thing again and again, starting from a different starting point can really infuse you with renewed excitement and it just gives you enough of a perspective shift that you can make something very new and it feels good. It feels exploratory. Um, you can get all your curiosity back. Um, it's okay to change directions. I started with these as abstract landscapes and as I continue on, I start adding collage, which is again, something I love to do. And it, still ended up because I started in a different place that I typically don't start with jelly plate printing, um, especially using it as a stamp like this. The end result ended up being a mix, two mixed media pieces that are, I think, categorically different than the types of things I've been making lately. They still look like my art. I feel like it, my, my sensibility is still there, but the pieces are unique, unique and distinct as their own two standalone, hey, these were made in a different way pieces. So we'll see if you agree. I started making a third because that background looks so cool, but I go back to just two. Um, yeah, so I love starting in new places because it leads you different directions. It's like if you go for a walk and you walk the same mile loop every day, and then one day you walk it and you start the other direction and go backwards. It's the same houses you're passing. It's the same stores you're passing. It's the same trees you're passing, but it looks different just because of the perspective shift. Now you're seeing the other side of the house first. Now you're noticing the mailbox, which you didn't notice before, because now it's right in your line of vision rather than being off to the side like it was when you walked the other direction. Sometimes as artists, we feel like we need to, you know, burn the whole thing down and start fresh to get something different. But subtle changes, for instance, starting with this jelly plate instead of starting with a paintbrush or collage, changed my art enough that it felt really new and exciting and interesting. And it actually felt exciting to the in the sense of like, oh boy, am I going off the deep end? Is this going to be totally disastrous? Um, uh, you know, dangerous, as dangerous as collage can be. But it felt like that. It felt, I don't know, it just felt exciting like that. It felt um, on the edge of, of being out of control. Which, which saying that now, looking at these pieces, I mean, it seems like a big exaggeration because it's paper. So how out of control can you actually get? But I'm curious to know if you guys understand what I'm saying. If you felt that, where it feels so new and so different that it's either going to be really cool or absolutely like completely horrible. So, 
I don't know. I, you know, if you guys are still listening to me, I feel like you might get it. Um, and anyone else who's, who doesn't get it for sure has probably left a long time ago. So thank you for staying and thank you for listening. So I'm adding these pieces in and this took me a lot longer than I expected it to making these two pieces. I don't know if I was overthinking it because I was still trying to keep it as an abstract landscape. You know, who knows? In my mind, I had it a certain way and it took me a while before I gave up on it and just went for it in other ways. And I'm trying to not, I'm trying to start off with, with an aim, right? An abstract landscape, but also to honor the direction that I end up going in. Because you don't have to know where you're going at the start. You really don't. You just have to start. And once you start, things will become more clear as you go. So for those of you waiting to get inspiration or motivation or a topic or a composition in mind before you start, I would encourage you to start and then figure it out as you go. Because the first few layers can always be experimental and, you know, you're the artist. You get con to control this. You make all the decisions. One of the few areas in life where we get to actually make all the choices we want to make. So I would encourage you to use that power, all the power that you wield, being able to make all the choices for your art. And start making some bold decisions if you're not sure what way to go. Take some big swings and dig yourself out of them. Some of my very favorite pieces have been near disasters. Or they actually were disasters that then I kept working on and turned them around. So as I continue to work on these, I'm really enjoying the process of feeling like, I don't know, like exposed and it just feels kind of clunky, but kind of in a good way. Um, I love the portion of the face in the lower right hand corner of the picture on the right. I think at this point I kept trying to add things. I wasn't sure what to add in order to add something to the collages. I didn't want to add anything too distracting. At one point I had envisioned adding just stripes of collage paper or strips, you know, horizontally across to give that landscape feel, but it never felt quite right. The piece on the left that I'm just gluing down right now was the piece that I think it, I had made the decision at that point, okay, I'm just going to give up the landscape. If it turns into one, great. But I'm not going to fight the fact that it might not be one. Now, part of me kind of wishes I'd left the right picture the way it is right now. Spoiler alert, I did not. And I spend a lot of time here trying things, cutting new things, looking for new scraps. And when I get close, I've decided, okay, fine, I'm just going to put it down. 
So I didn't feel uniformly free or uniformly stuffy about my decision making. I was trying to stay in the moment while also I don't know something <laughs> while also being adventurous and trying to find something that would fit. And what I'm looking at now, I'm looking at the pile of collage paper on the lower left of the screen and seeing how few of those things are black and white. And it looks like I realized that in real life too, because I'm now I'm getting out my white tissue paper. It's as if I needed some more black and white influence. That seems to be my go-to when I'm not sure what to do. See, look at that black and white. And yellow. So I'm not sure if, if people aren't, uh, if this is the first video of mine you're watching, you might not think anything of the design. And even if this is your 100th video of mine that you're watching, you might not either. But to me, these felt so different. Visually, they feel different. Even some of the colors feel pretty off brand. But I think I don't know. I think I like how they ended up. It was just a slog. I, I did not expect it to take as long as it did. This is like hours and hours of... How about this one? Nope. How about this one? Nope. How about this one? No. How about this one? No. Over here? No. Yes? No. <laughs> and it was frustrating. Um, but it was also intriguing to figure out why these things that normally would feel easier, why they weren't working. I suppose it's the same anywhere, right? Art mirrors life, life mirrors art. Um, you know, in life when I wasn't sure what I wanted to do or when I'm not sure what I want to do, often if I pick something that's super different, I'll either quickly realize, oh my gosh, this is exciting and I want to do this. Or I'll be like, oh no, hard pass. That was fun for a night, but I don't want to do that anymore. I think the same is true with my artistic directions as well. When something excites me like this project did ultimately, it's really fun and I want to do more of it. And I get excited about the, the potential because of how new and exciting and different this felt. That feels really exciting. There are definitely times when I've tried to, it happens most when I'm trying to channel the artistic, you know, choices of someone else. Um, when I start feeling like, Oh, this is not at all enjoyable. This is not what I want to be doing. I don't like how this feels. I feel very closed off and restricted. Need something new. Another thing I'm realizing that something new doesn't mean that it's going to be something better. And trying to find something better doesn't mean it's going to be something new. More often than not, I find myself going back to the things that make me feel safe and cozy and welcome and warm and loved. So a lot of those things are familiar things that either right, remind me of my childhood or, uh, you know, family traditions or my, you know, my dogs or other things. And... 
it's not always the new shiny thing in the room that is even what you're looking for, despite the fact that shiny things are shiny and they are fun. So if you're feeling stuck, you might try going in your art supplies and picking something out that you haven't used for a while or something you bought thinking you would use it and you haven't used it all. The nice thing about using tools and supplies that you're unfamiliar with or less familiar with is we often will give ourselves more wiggle room in performing with them, basically. So, you know, I don't use uh, soft pastels very often, so the chalky ones. I don't know real reason. I guess other they don't. It's hard for me to fix them and then do layers, and it's I don't know. I don't trust that it's not going to smear later. So, if I take out those pastels and use them, my expectations are pretty low. I'm not expecting to make something that I'm going to sell someday. I'm not expecting it to be something that I want to hang on my own wall. And just because of that, there's more room for me to play. And there's less pressure. Try to take as much pressure off yourself as possible if you're feeling stuck. While I do work well under pressure, especially for my, you know, working in, in grad school and my corporate job, sure. But I don't think it ever uh, presents the best version of me. So I think it'll help me get things done. It'll help me close the deal or it'll help me close, finish the project and put an, an end point on it, which sometimes otherwise I'll let things linger. But... I always do my best work when I can play and when I feel free to play and I am not worried about being judged or scrutinized and I'm just allowed to be curious and follow my own way and see what happens. So the more opportunities you can give yourself to be in whatever your zone is where you feel the best and I would argue that for most of us if not all of us are is some sort of play or experiment however you can get yourself in the mindset of I'm just gonna play around I'm gonna set the timer for 15 minutes I'm not expecting anything to come out of it. Just going to play. Or getting together with some people who are not artists and making art with them. Cut up a magazine. Do something that's uh, inviting people into your world of creativity. But that they're not going to add pressure to you. Right. If you, if you invite someone that you're really trying to impress, that's probably not going to be the way that, that sets you free. I don't know, you guys. I don't know where I'm going with any of this. Um, this, much like the collages that I'm currently watching myself make on this video, this, uh, this voiceover is every bit as random and, <laughs> and scattered. <sighs> the inner workings of my brain, very unfiltered. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing that I just don't have the energy to filter myself. <laughs> so you guys are stuck with this. I really am curious to hear what you guys think of these at the end. Mostly, um, do they still feel like me? 
because I, I feel like they do but I also feel like it's just a different version of me and I love the potential and the possibility of artistic evolution I think it's so cool if you think about artists that you love and you follow them like Van Gogh right easy most people know him if he painted a Wheaties box there's a really good chance by his brush strokes you'd know it was him that painted it um and they're just some very very strong styles that, that come about and yet if he right if let, let's say he had gone into pop culture and was alive now and started painting cereal boxes we'd all be able to say wow isn't that cool that van gogh is so into cereal boxes now and yet it still reminds me of his other work i can still see the brush strokes i can still see how he handles light i can still see these certain characteristics that i loved seeing in his other work and now i see it in this fruit loops box painting in front of me i think it's fascinating when artists evolve into new types of projects or you see someone who works in collage and then they go to painting or painting and then collage and it, like claire desjardins i i love claire, claire desjardins she's a canadian artist makes wonderful brightly colored like rainbow colored um really to me happy art love her she on the side also makes um what are they called like punch rugs or something like that basically like a latch hook kit but it's a not latch hook and she's making these rugs so she's making them and she's making them in her style and they're gorgeous and it's like oh of course she made that one i can immediately see that this is the one that she made if you gave me you know 20 rugs and have me pick out the one that she made I would pick the one that she made it's obvious but it's such a different medium than painting it's so different and yet her style remains and I just think that's awesome and maybe it's totally obvious to everyone else I don't know um, but I'm always shocked when people can tell the things that I've made when I totally switch mediums. I'm feeling very self-conscious that I'm talking about myself so much right now, um, <laughs> or so much about my style anyway. Um, and I think the reason that I'm so focused on it is that to me, these feel so different, so different than what I usually make. So that's the eye that's it's through those eyes that I'm looking at this. Hopefully that will make some sense to you guys. Anyway, I love it when I'm surprised by the things that come out of my hands. I love it even more when they're not in my head to begin with. And it just comes out. So my hands are working. And at the end, my head catches up and is like, huh. All right. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. I think that's why I like exploring so much and experimenting so much. Because truly, that's how you learn. And that's how you learn who you are in your art. And that's how you learn what your style is so if you're not sure what your style is and you're still searching for that which i remember well um the more at bats you have and the more you create from a quantity perspective uh the better i used to think you should work really hard on one painting until you get that one quote right and then move on to more um and now i'm completely the opposite if you can make um 
you know, I don't know, make a painting a day, make, make a grid journal a day, get as many reps as you can of just making things, whether they turn out well or not. Just keep making, keep showing up, keep moving your brush around the paper, keep adding collage, keep doing whatever it is that lights you up. And you will find what you like and you'll gravitate toward that. And the more you focus on what you like and the decisions that you make, because genuinely they come from inside you, the more unique your artwork will be and the more recognizable it will be as yours. So if you're frustrated, I've been there and I often still feel there at times. Um, So just keep going. Just keep going. It will happen. You just need more at-bats. And sometimes it happens incredibly slowly. Like I feel that this exercise, again, it felt like it took me forever. It felt like I had to try on 50 scraps for every one that fit. It's probably not real, but that's how it felt. And I don't know that it's perfect by any means. Well, it's certainly not because that's not achievable. Um, but I don't know that there's nothing I wouldn't change about it. I just, I just like that it's different. There are some things that uh, are wonderful just because they're not the same as everything else. For anyone who saw everyone everywhere all at once, um, that movie was bonkers. Uh, and there was a lot of it that was just like, what is happening? But I loved the big swing that they took making that movie. I love that it was so bonkers and so out there that there's nothing else you can compare it to. There's nothing else that it was copying that I could tell. And it was truly unique. And I think as artists, the bigger the swing, if we're committed to it, if you have a thing that you love, do it all the way. I think that's what I'm, that's what I'm learning this year. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even remember what I've said in this voiceover. So um, I'm not feeling my best. You can probably tell in my voice and I'd have no energy to edit this. So here's hoping, here's hoping I didn't share my bank account numbers and <laughs> all of my <laughs> confidential information. Um, I don't know. I'm so thankful to have you guys watching. If you have not subscribed and you enjoyed what you saw, please subscribe. I'm almost at 10,000 subscribers, you guys. Thank you. Uh, it's nuts. That's bonkers too. But I really appreciate you for watching. And I hope that you will comment and tell me what you think. Tell me what you like best about this even if there's only one thing you like about it. <laughs> is it the colors? Is it the collage? Is it me slowly unraveling? <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye.